Hello everyone and welcome to my spotlight presentation with the title Towards Markerless Surgical Tool and Hand Pose Estimation. In this talk I'm going to summarize the findings of our latest paper of the same name, which was recently accepted for IPGAI 2021. Our motivation for joint hand tool pose estimation is the fact that tracking hands in surgical instruments becomes increasingly important on the way to a digitized operating room. Knowing the exact pose of surgeons' hands and surgical instruments allows us to optimize the outcome of a surgery by providing surgical guidance, reduce the likelihood of intraoperative complications via automated human error detection, and reduce the radiation exposure for patient and staff. Such use cases depend on the comparison of the current hand and tool poses with the preoperative and patient-specific plan. However, strict regulations for operations in operating rooms, such as certifications for new hardware or the protection of patient-specific data, complicate the collection of realistic training data, which is required for state-of-the-art deep learning methods. In this paper, we focus on visual pose estimation of surgical instruments in the operating room. For the scenario, we assume an egocentric perspective, since a head-mounted camera provides a close and unobluded view on the surgical instruments and the incision, without obstructing the surgeons in any way. Also, this perspective allows us to later deploy the tracking system on a mixed reality device such as the HoloLens. We focus on bone drilling as an exemplary application, as drilling is conducted in about 95% of all orthopedic interventions. Although the HoloLens provides many more sensors, we decided to only use a single RGB camera, as RGB cameras are still the most common type of camera in operating rooms and can be deployed at low cost. Because the instruments are always held, occluded and interacted with by a surgeon's hand, we looked at joint tool and hand pose estimation approaches, because they might benefit from the explicit attention on the hand. In our paper, we propose two data generation pipelines. First, a synthetic data generation pipeline, based on the code and paper by Hassan and others, is used to generate realistic RGB patches for our scenario. Using this pipeline, we generate a synthetic dataset that can be used for joint hand tool pose estimation. Hereby, we exemplarily use the medical power drill by Johnson & Johnson, shown in the image. Second, we propose a semi-automatic labeling pipeline to create a real dataset, which was recorded using two LR Connect cameras. The synthetic data pipeline is based on Blender. We render hand and tool in front of real frames taken from existing operation videos. The grasps of the tool are manually predefined in the so-called Graspit simulator and then verified to be physically and biomechanically correct. The generated dataset consists of about 10,000 frames. For the real dataset, we recorded 11 drilling sequences in a mock-up operating room. For increased diversity, we used two pairs of differently colored rubber gloves and let two different users operate the drill. The ground truth is recovered via ICP and under the assumption of a rigid connection between hand and tool. The real dataset consists of about 2300 frames. We trained and evaluated three baseline models on our datasets. First, we used the joint hand object pose estimation model by Hassan and others, here called hand object net, which is shown in the top right image. Our second baseline is PVNet, an object-only pose estimation model which recovers the 6D pose indirectly by estimating pixel-wise 2D offsets to predefined key points on the object's 3D surface. Last, we evaluated a combination of the first two baselines, where we replaced the object decoder branch from hand object net with the decoder part of PVNet. All models use only a single RGB frame as input. We observed that the domain gap between our two datasets is still significant and it was therefore necessary to refine our models on real data after pre-training them on synthetic data. The best model achieves an average 3D vertex error of 13.78 mm on real test data. We also evaluated the error of the drill tip as its correct localization is of particular importance for the drilling procedure. However, we found that all of the baselines produce insufficiently high errors, which is likely due to the large distance between the tip and the drill center and the resulting high impact of errors in the rotation estimate. For future work, we want to extend our pipelines and datasets to RGBD, as the depth estimation was also challenging for all baseline models. Furthermore, we'd like to introduce self-supervised losses in order to reduce the need for real labeled data. 
Last, the benefit of temporal input should also be evaluated. Thank you for your attention and feel free to ask any questions.